Art is one of the most powerful tool in expression and healing when it comes to our soul. So in this video, we're going to talk about the power of art and how it can unlock our innermost feelings and emotions and of course the other way around. Hi, my name is Hayes. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia. So today we're going to talk all about the power of art. And we all know that art is a powerful tool for self-expression, but what about healing? Can art help to heal emotional wounds and pain? I think it can and in this video, I'm going to show you why and how. So let's dive right into it. So today we are going to talk about how to express your emotions in art and heal yourself in that process. So there is a difference between feeling emotional while you are painting versus creating an artwork that actually evokes emotion in the viewer. So this doesn't mean that when you are creating the artwork, you were very emotional, you were sad, you were angry, and these emotions will actually translate over to your audience. It does not work that way. So in order to actually communicate emotions or messages to your audience, you actually need to apply skills and techniques. However, you first need an emotional response to an issue, to your story or your past in order to inspire you in the first place to create the artwork. So the most important skill to have are composition skills. There are certain compositions that are leaning towards certain emotions. For example, the horizontal composition are more known to create a peaceful feeling, whereas a diagonal composition is to evoke dramatic uh, feelings in your audience. So in my artwork here, you can see there's an inverted triangle. So we'll go into this later on in this conversation. So most of the times when we are emotional, it's extremely difficult to express it because emotions are so complex and it can actually be a combination of various emotions. So it's impossible to label them because it's not just anger or happiness or just feeling broken. So when there's a combination of them, it's difficult to label or communicate them using words. We just feel so bottled up and full of emotions that we don't even know where to start when it comes to expressing them. So expressing them in an artwork is even more difficult. So if I ask you to create an artwork depicting your life story, it will be an enormous task that will probably end up with a very complex painting. So it will probably have a lot of humans in it with a lot of objects and elements and subject matter in order to tell the story that you want to tell. So it's going to be super super complex. So today, I want to share a couple of easy tips for you to start expressing yourself bit by bit even though you have trouble with inspiration or communication. Okay, so the first tip is don't wait until your painting is done in order to infuse any emotions or narrative because if you do, you will be too attached to your own artwork and the time spent and the effort spent, you'll be too attached and you won't be able to delete or change things to fit your new narrative. So this is really, really important and can be a huge block for your process. So make sure that you plan things early on even before you start your artwork. So make sure to create thumbnails in the beginning and see how you can tell your story using compositions and what kind of subject matter or elements you can put in to hint your narrative. So another tip is to use uh, stereotypes to evoke emotions. So the most common stereotypes are face expression is the easiest to manipulate when it comes to evoking an emotion. So a painting of someone crying means pain and someone laughing means happiness. It's really simple. So if you want to bring your artwork to the next level, so try not to use expressions and find other means of communicating your message. So in this painting here, for example, I am using a lot of floral elements in order to evoke a sense of tenderness in the artwork's meaning. So the babies can both be interpreted as cute, disturbing and beautiful. So ultimately, I want to show them um, reaching out to the animals instead of the woman here. But the most important thing is the cheetah itself. So the cheetah itself is placed above the female uh, human to give a sense of disruption because it makes more sense for the cheetah to be on the ground and it makes more sense for the composition to be triangle. So the most normal thing in this artwork are the two cheetah cups. They are just meant to be cute in order to evoke emotions when the tears fall down the woman's face later on in the animation. So the story of this artwork goes like this. So there is a legend that uh, the cheetah went away for hunting and left the cups behind in the cave. 
so every day this cheetah would do this and a woman knows the cheetah's uh, schedule and she wanted to take the cups for herself so one day the woman smiled to herself as she stole the cups so this would cause the cheetah so much pain and sorrow that it would cry two permanent black lines down the cheeks which is actually the markings of a cheetah that is very prominent so she knew this legend well and she was excited to see the devastation on the cheetah's face so this lady is also a mother herself and she has two babies and these two babies are actually friends with the cheetah so because she is also a mother and she stole the cheetah's cup, she can actually imagine the anguish that the cheetah was feeling. It caused the black tears to stream down her own face. So she was actually filled with a sadistic joy at being able to cause such pain. So this piece actually ties into a lot of issues that I was uh, thinking about when I was creating the artwork. So the issues of unethical breeding, kidnapping of animals were very close to my heart so this art tells of a human tainted by guilt and the sorrow of a mother who lost a child so we were at the topic of using stereotypes to tell a story and to evoke emotions so basically uh, using stereotypical elements in terms of subject matter can tell a story but you can also find ways to break stereotypes in order to bring your artwork to a higher level so when you break stereotypes in terms of creating an artwork, you will be able to tell the story in an indirect manner. And telling a story in an indirect manner is of course more difficult than telling it literally. But this will also give it a lot more artistic flair. So the next tip is tip number four which is to remove aesthetics in favour of the narrative. So oftentimes you can make something less pretty in order to convey a message. Um, here you can see me doing black tears for the girl which also looks like the markings on a cheetah. So I'm using the reference from Billie Eilish there. So this actually does not make the girl any prettier. And I'm actually like kind of destroying her if in the process. So on the same note, you can actually make your character older or give the person defects, wounds or scars. Change the skin colour a little bit and maybe make the body less perfect just to showcase a point. Like if you are into body positivity, you can always highlight different variations of the uh, body parts instead of having just a hourglass body part that is so common in many many uh, illustrations of girls. So this goes for the environment and objects as well. Perfect objects that are clean have no personality. So every object in the environment can have personality and dust and dirt, cracks and different ways of being broken in order to communicate your message better. So this is a lot more important when you are working on an illustration that has interior design. So if you have interior design, uh, or architecture in your illustration there will be a lot of elements that could have uh, personality in there like the stationery or the decoration itself or how it's kept is it clean is it messy is it how is it so the arrangement of everything can actually dictate the emotions that you're trying to portray so an important tip is to find ways to hint at your message or narrative every spot in your artwork. Even dust or speckles or environmental fog can tell a story and a broken cup or a broken handle can tell a story better than perfect um, objects. So the way to achieve this is to decide on this really really early on because if you already have perfect objects in your scene and your painting, sometimes it can be impossible to destroy them. So how do you know that your approaches have worked? So it's really easy because the more that you recompose your art to deliver the message, the more time you spend on your artwork and you realize that the more emotional you are getting when you're working on a piece. And the emotions that you get while you are on the piece are actually the emotions that you're trying to deliver. So because the message that you are trying to say to others are being delivered to you with every successful integration of hint that you place inside the artwork because you're looking in your artwork and of course you receive your, the emotions that you're trying to portray so if you are feeling emotional in the correct emotions so rejoice because you know that everything is working but you should also stay detached enough from them especially if the emotions are negative so staying detached enough from your own emotions is important because you need 
to be detached to complete your artwork first so my advice to you is to think of one story or one emotions even small emotions you can use that to modify your painting to fit your narrative you don't have to try to tell an entire story that can only fit in a novel or a comic strip so sometimes just one setting and one environment can tell the story even just one pose or one expression can tell the story already so this is so important because once you get started with expressing yourself bit by bit even though the emotions are very small and you successfully do it you'll find that you have opened a floodgate and because of that you will find that expressing your emotions come easily to you in your future artworks so it's very important not to overcomplicate things by putting too many elements into one painting. You don't have to do that. Just try and tell your story in the most direct, simplest manner with the least changes. And you must make sure that while you make those changes, they are very effective so you don't have to create any more additional elements in order to tell your story. So uh, another tip is to figure out the title of your artwork or some lyrics or have a poem that reflects your artwork and use that as your direction when it comes to creating the artwork itself. So this can actually help you a lot when it comes to the creative direction. So now let's talk about the element of healing when it comes to creating art that express your own emotions. So usually when you're troubled by something and you happen to tell someone about it, you will actually feel relief because you were hurt, someone knows your pain and your misery was being averaged. So it's the same when we create a painting. So if the painting is effective in communicating the emotions, you will actually feel very relieved the moment you show it to others. Even more so than talking about it, I would say because um, when it comes to artwork, there is a visual element that you can set up to tell your story and this setup itself can tell a lot more than just words when it comes to communicating. So the relief that you get is a lot more compared to just communicating with a friend or a therapist. But I do have to say that if you are feeling very emotional, and you are creating artwork with those emotions at the same time you are not implementing any composition or design skills to tell your story but you are just expressing yourself and reacting to your emotions by painting not only will you not be able to communicate your message to your audience you won't feel any relief and every time you look at that artwork you would just feel stifled and you would feel upset and frustrated because it did not convey the message that you want to tell. So it's really important to differentiate between expressing yourself versus communicating using the artwork. But there's no harm in actually releasing your emotions through the act of painting. But just know that releasing your emotions during a painting process does not necessarily translate the emotions over to your audience. And if you do not have the expectations, then that would be uh, okay. But if you have successfully tell your story with your artwork, you would definitely feel lighter and you would definitely feel more ready to tackle the next conversation that you want to start in your new piece for your collection. So this would actually be something to look forward to because there is so many stories to tell, right? When it comes to life and yourself in general, or maybe you are going to tell stories uh, on other people's behalf. That is also a noble cause, but that one is a conversation for another day. So here I have the final artwork in a form of animation on the left and the rain is falling in this final artwork. As it proceeds, the rain becomes black causing the cheetah spots to appear on everyone. So this symbolizes impurity, sin and guilt and it actually ties into the cheetah's black spots as well. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope that by watching this video and listening to my experiences, you can actually help yourself express yourself better through art and also use art to help yourself heal at the same time. So this artwork was minted as an NFT on foundation on the Ethereum blockchain. So you can start the reserve by placing a bit of 0.1 Ethereum if you're interested. And next up, 
on my channel is a pure procreate tutorial that is a huge tutorial so i'm actually going to release my secrets on how to create brush packs so it's going to be a beginner tutorial and make sure you wait for that and those that watch all the way to the end for this video actually will find out first so i'll see you next time remember to like comment and subscribe to my channel bye bye